Before you view this video, make sure that you have read through the PowerPoint on Moodle over Section 2.5 and that you understand what you have read. So don't just flip through it, but take your time. So we're going to use the concepts now after you've done that PowerPoint and we're going to use um, some examples to kind of solidify those. So this first problem says y is equals to the square root of x and we want to write the function when y equals square root of the x is shifted up four units. Anytime we shift up or down we're just going to add or subtract that number to our function that is given. So our solution would be y equals the square root of x plus 4. If I were shifting down 4 units, that would be a minus 4. In our second example, we're going to take the same function, but we're going to shift it right or horizontally 4 units. When we do a horizontal shift either right or left, our number that we're using to shift must be grouped inside with the x. And if we go right, it's minus 4. So y equals the square root of x minus 4 would be right 4 units. If we were to write y equals the square root of x plus 4, that means we would be shifting the graph left 4 units. Now compare this function to this one, and you can see the difference. Up and down, the number is just added to the entire function. Right or left, the number is added or subtracted with the x. It needs to be grouped with the x. Our third example, we have y equals x squared. We're going to reflect that in the x-axis and shift it up three units. Well, a reflection involves a negative in front of the function. So that will be minus x squared and then up 3 units would be plus 3. So that would be our new function. Our fourth example says the graph of y equals x to the third is stretched vertically by a factor of 5. That means we're going to multiply the function by 5 and then it is shifted down 3 units. So that would be y equal 5 times x to the third and shifted down means we subtract 3 from the function. Now in this next example, it's asking us to tell what the um, transformations were. So we have y equals x plus 3 squared plus 1. How is that transformed from the graph of y equals x squared? Well, the plus 3 grouped with the x tells us we have a horizontal shift to the left. It's always kind of the opposite of what you see here. If it's plus, it's to the left. If it's minus, it's to the right. So left 3, and then the plus 1 at the end tells us that we're going to go up one unit. Okay, let's continue on then with our next example. And in this example we have a graph of a function and we are supposed to write the equation that is transformed from the function f of x equals absolute value of x. And we know that this is an absolute value curve because it is a v-shape. Now this point right here is what we need to determine because normally our absolute value function starts at 0, 0. But this one starts at the point 4, 6. So what we have done is we have moved this graph 4 to the right 
and six up. So taking my absolute value function, if I'm going to talk about right or left, I have to put that in with the x. So right 4 would be x minus 4, and then after the absolute value symbol, up 6 would be plus 6. Okay, our next example says graph the absolute value of x plus 4 minus 3 using transformations and find the area of the region bounded by f and the x-axis that lies below the x-axis. I think this is kind of like one of your homework problems. So let's graph this first. First of all, this is the absolute value function. and it has been shifted four to the left and down three. So I know my absolute value function goes to the point zero, zero, one, one, two, two, three, three, negative one, one, negative two, two, negative three, three, and so on. I want to shift that so that we are going four left and three down. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three. That's my new point that's kind of the bottom of the V. And then you shift each other point that's on that V four left and three down. Just go four left and three down, four left and three down, and we get a V that looks like that. Now we want to find the area of the region bounded by the function and the x-axis that lies below the x-axis. So here's my x-axis, here's my function. I want to find the area of that triangle. And you'll need to know that the area of a triangle is one-half the base times the height. So our base is the bottom of the triangle. This is kind of flipped over, and that length is one, two, three, four, five, six. And then the height is this length right here, which is one, two, three. So the base is here and the height is here and we want to multiply one half times six times three and we get nine. So our area is nine square units.